Hey what's up guys, I'm gonna here and welcome back to a brand new Unity, I mean sorry not a brand new Unity tutorial. I do make a lot of them so sometimes I get a bit mistaken. But um yeah, so today I'm making a new Godot tutorial where today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make a basic main menu in Godot. And specifically the version of Godot that I'm using is Godot 4.1, so yeah. So if you're using Godot 4 this tutorial should be right for you. And maybe if you're using a lower version of Godot, or a higher version of Godot, this may work for you as well. If uh, Godot still works the same way in whatever version you're using, so uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, before I do start, I will explain a bit about what I'm going to do in this tutorial, what I'm going to show you guys. So this scene right here, this is just from a, a few previous tutorials. The Navmesh stuff here is from a previous tutorial, and so is this door here. But uh, this scene will be used in this tutorial. But, um, so what we're going to be doing for the main menu is we're going to be doing a play button and a quit button. Now, I would do settings, I was debating whether or not I should do settings, but then I decided that I might save that for another tutorial, so like a settings tutorial, and I could integrate that into like the basic main menu that I make today in this project. So, uh, yeah, we could do that, since this project here is what I use for a lot of my Godot tutorials. And so what I'm going to be teaching you guys today is just basic, uh, you know, pressing a play button and loading into a scene, sort of like how you would in Unity. And then uh, how to quit a game as well. So how about without forever ado, we get right into it. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new scene. So when you're in a Godot project, you just press the plus uh, button here to add a new scene. And we're going to be uh, adding a user interface. We're going to be doing some UI since we're making a main menu. So you want to click user interface. And boom. Now with the parent object here, or parent node I should say. Um, you can uh, call this whatever you want. If you just want to leave it as called control. Because you don't really care. That's totally fine. But you know, I do like to have a bit of organization. So then I don't lose things. So we'll just call this main menu. And I do recommend that you probably do the same thing as well. Now what we're going to do first off is we're actually going to create a menu background. Now for this tutorial um, I am just going to use a basic color rect so then we just have a basic color. But if you guys want to as well you can uh, use a texture rect. Now what a texture rect is, is it's basically like a an image uh, sort of like in Unity where you would add a texture to it and then that texture rect will then display that image so yeah but today in this tutorial I'm just going to be using a basic color rect so then we can just set a color so uh, when you're doing UI in Godot what you'll notice is you'll have like these lines here now this is like your border of your UI so do keep that in mind this is like the 16 by 9 border of the UI and so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be dragging this color rect. So um, when you've got your color rect select, uh, selected, uh, or texture rect, whatever you've got, uh, you, like I said, you can use a texture rect if you want to as well, if you want to use an image for your background of your main menu. But um, uh, when you've got it selected, you'll see these orange dots here, and this is for scaling it. So we're going to scale this so then it fits uh, this UI here. I mean, so then it fits like the uh, sort of like canvas outlinings, I guess you could say, like the UI outlinings. And uh, when you've got your color rect selected as well, you can actually set the color uh, just by clicking on this here, on this color bar. And then just like how in Unity, if you've used Unity before, or, you know, pretty much most programs where you can, you know, change color. Uh, you know, it has a color wheel and you can just, uh, you know, change all these certain aspects and you can get whatever color you want. And uh, yeah, so for this tutorial I'm going to go with a blue background since blue is probably my favorite color. <coughs> and also you can change the transparency if you want to as well. So uh, yeah. And there we go, that there is my menu background. Now I am going to call this uh, background. Again, just so then there's a bit of organization, I do suggest you guys probably organize things a bit as well. And uh, yeah, so now what we're going to do is um, we're actually going to add in a bit of text. And this is just, you know, like the name of our game. So we'll call this Rich Text Label. So that's the type of text you need to get out. Or, um, you know, there's probably other text types as well, I haven't seen any um, 
Yeah, I think uh, rich text labels like the uh, only text type, like it's the main text type. So get out a rich text label. And uh, yeah, you can scale it. So uh, what we're going to do here is we're just going to enter some basic text. So I'm just going to enter in game title. And as you can see, the text is pretty small and you're probably wondering how you increase the font size. What you do is you, with your text selected, you go into theme overrides and then font sizes, and then on the normal font size thing here, you can actually set the font size of the text. So if we want to set it to 70, and there we go, now we have a 70. Now when it comes to getting the text centered, I'm actually not too sure how to do that. If you guys know how to, then uh, you know, you guys can uh, give a bit of an explanation in the comments if you want to. But um, yeah, I only just started using Godot in, I think, September last year properly. But yeah. Um, when it comes to uh, centering text, I'm not too sure how to, but if you do want to center the text in your main menu, um, you know, you can just do it as simply as this if you want to, but when it comes to actually, like, centering it in, like, the middle of the actual text box, I'm not too sure how to do that, but when it comes to, t uh, just centering it in your main menu, you know, just, it's as simple as just, you know, just doing this, you know, just like that. But yeah, when it comes to centering in the text box, not too sure how you do that. But uh, yeah, there are a bunch of settings you can mess around with here if you do want to mess around with some stuff. So uh, yeah, when it comes to the text as well, you can also uh, change the font of it. So if you go into the theme overrides and fonts, you can actually change the uh, fonts here. So yeah, if you have any fonts, you can import them into your project and then you can change them here. So yeah, I'm not going to be changing any fonts for this tutorial, but just letting you guys know in case you want to. And so yeah, so with this text, I'm just going to uh, position in the middle of my screen, just like that, and boom. If you guys have a logo as well, uh, you don't have to use text, you can just get out a text direct, so then you can then put an image on it and then display your game's logo. So if you want to do that, that's totally possible as well. In fact, um, because there is a bit of setting up to do when it comes to the text direct, I might actually show just an example of how to do that later on in the video, later on. But um, for now, we should probably get to the buttons, which is, you know, the main part of the main menu, the actual interactivity of it. Um, if you want to have any other text on your main menu, such as, you know, your name, to show who made the project, um, you know, I showed you guys how to add the rich, rich text label, you should know how to do that by now, so yeah. And, um, so what we're going to be doing now, um, first off, I'm just going to rename this again for just a bit of organization, we're going to call this game title. And then what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, just select this, go add child node. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to search button. And we're just going to get a regular button. So now we have our button. So we can just scale this. And we'll just put it here. Now the text on my button is just going to simply say play. And again, if you want to change the font size of it, you just go to theme overrides, font size. And then you can change the font size of the button just like that. And again, you can also change the font of the text as well. And uh, yeah, so there we have our play button. And now, instead of, uh, you know, getting and, you know, clicking on this and then adding another child node and creating another button and going through the same process again, uh, what we can do is we can actually just select this button here and then we can press Control D to duplicate it, just like how you would in Unity. And then you can drag this down here. And I'll call this quit. And there we go. So that there is our basic main menu. So with these buttons, I'm just going to rename them to play button. And then we'll call this one quit button. And there we go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do some scripting. So with the main menu selected, uh, at the bottom of uh, the inspector here, you should see a thing here saying script, click on empty, go new script, and then what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a new folder to store our scripts in. Actually, wait, no, I forgot, in this tutorial project I already have a scripts folder. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go into scripts, and then we're going to create a new script called main menu. Just like that. And then go create. And so here is our script. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the starter stuff here, just like how I would in one of my Unity tutorials. 
and then we're going to call this function here, so we're going to go func. So if you're a Unity user and you're transitioning over to Godot, um, you know, func is basically like a void, so it's your function. And what I'm going to call this is I'm just going to call this play. So this will be our play function. And then we're going to add the two dots there and then just press enter to indent. And so with this, this is where we're going to, uh, once our player presses the play button, it will then load our scene. Alrighty, so what we're going to do is in our play function, we're going to write the following. Get underscore tree and then parentheses and then change underscore scene to file and then uh, as you can see here when you are typing code in Godot something that is very useful is you'll have stuff that automatically shows up here in like this little tab here and as you can actually see here it already gives us some options for scenes for us to load into now I was already going to select this one right here the level scene the one I showed you guys at the start of the video because I want to load us into this when we press play so what we're going to do is we're going to do this and boom and if you're wondering why all this other text here is included, that's because this is the path in order to load up this scene. Because uh, in the Godot project folder, you have the resource folder, and then we have the scenes folder that we created, and then uh, we have the level. So uh, yeah. Now, uh, you guys can replace scenes with whatever your path is, if you have a different path, of course. This is just what the path in my project is, so that's why I have it set to this. But you guys can set it whatever, to whatever you want, of course. So, uh, yeah. And then, what we're going to do is we're going to go func quit. <clears throat> now, this one's pretty simple as well. So, we just go get underscore tree and then parentheses and then quit and boom just like that so it's pretty simple just like in unity where it's just like application dot quit and yeah so now what we're going to do is we're going to press ctrl s and then we're going to go into the scenes folder and we're just going to save the main menu scene here just save it like that and boom and uh yeah so now we have this script all fully prepared uh yeah it's pretty basic and now we're going to go play button so select the play button and then uh, where the inspector is to the right you just want to go node and then you want to go pressed so double click that and then in the receiver method you want to uh, type in play since that is the name of our function here and then you want to make sure that whatever object or whatever node uh, you have your script attached to in your scene you want to make sure that you have that selected here and then you want to press connect and then that will actually connect the button to this function here so when you press this button this function will happen and then we're going to do the same with the quit button we're going to make sure that we're in the node thing here in the node tab we're going to go pressed and then instead of writing play in the receiver method we're going to write quit make sure we have the uh you know the object or node that our script is attached to selected go connect and then boom now the quit button is connected as well so what we're going to do is we're going to press save or we're just going to press ctrl s to save make sure you do save often in case your project or your pc crashes just in case and uh yeah so this here is our basic main menu and uh yeah so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to try this out so how you actually uh do you know test your game whilst you're in engine is here in the top right you do have some buttons so we have the play button so when you press this it will just load up the main scene of your project and in order to set a main scene in your project you just right click and then you go uh, set as main scene and then you'll know what the main scene is if it's highlighted in blue so the level scene here is our main scene but I want the main menu to be the main scene so we're going to go set this as the main scene and as you can see the text here is now highlighted in blue meaning we've made it the uh, main scene so now what we're going to do is we're going to press the play button in order to test this out and yeah so here we have our uh, main menu as you can see when I'm hovering the mouse it is hovering over both the play and quit button and if I press play now I am in the scene and boom just like that uh, we just loaded into a scene by pressing play so now let's actually test out the quit button so let's go play again press quit and boom, as you can see, the game quit. 
And yeah, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial, but as I did say, I will quickly show you guys how to use texture rects if you want to use them in your main menu as well, so I will show you guys how to do them quickly. Alrighty, so what we're going to do to end off this tutorial is we're just going to select the main menu, go add child node, and we're going to type in texture rect. And there we go, so now we have our texture rect, and this is for our image, so you can scale it if you want to. And uh, if you go back into your inspector tab here on the right, you can actually see that there's an empty variable called texture. You want to click on this and then go quick load and then you can add in any texture you want. Now the only texture which I actually have in this project is the Godot icon. So we'll be using this as an example. And here we have our texture. Now as you can see, um, I can just scale it at will. But sometimes with certain images, um, something which I've noticed with certain images I might add into a project is I won't be able to scale them how I want. And the reason as to why is because when you first add a texture rect into your scene, um, if your image for some reason can't scale properly, the reason as to why is because the default stretch mode, I mean this default expand mode I mean, is set to keep size. But if you change this to anything else, then it will be a lot more better if you set it to ignore size or fit width or fit width proportional. I usually do fit width proportional so then I don't accidentally, um, you know, scale the images wrong. So then it's a bit too wide or a bit too tall. Uh, you know, if I do fit width proportional or fit height proportional, then I know that I'm going to get the image the right size that I want to. So yeah, but um, yeah, do whatever expand mode works for you. If you do find that keep size works for you, then keep it as keep size. Um, I'll be keeping it for this tutorial since it works fine for this image, but yeah. So yeah, um, that's how you do add a texture rect into your scene. Pretty easy, uh, not really much else to it than that. So news guys, if you did enjoy this tutorial, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more Godot tutorials like this. I also do make Unity tutorials as well, in case you didn't know. So uh, be sure to go check them out if you want to. And uh, yeah, see you all soon in my next one. Uh, be sure to go check out my games on Itch.io if you want to. I do make Itch.io games. And also um, as well, uh, be sure to maybe check out uh, Bodhi and Friends on Steam. That is a paid game. If you want to get that, then uh, be sure to. It's uh, my first uh, big project that I actually made by myself. And uh, yeah, so I just wanted to plug that before I ended the video. But uh, yeah, again, you don't have to buy Bodhi and Friends if you don't want to. I'm just letting you guys know about it in case you don't know about it. But I do know a lot of you guys would uh, know about it already if you've been watching the channel for a while. And uh, yeah, anyways, see you all soon and bye bye